Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Amanda Spear. I'm with Premier World Discovery. Uh, and I came here from Raleigh. I cover the Carolinas and the East Coast, kind of I'm a regional manager. I'm uh, very excited to be here. Um, as he mentioned, I have worked uh, with Trevor now for a few years, but with Trilogy, fairly new and very, and we did a very successful San Antonio holiday tour. Was anyone here on that trip? I know there's a handful. All right, fantastic. So thank you. Um, so obviously times have been interesting and right now we were just talking and it's so great to be able to be in a room again and just speak and talk and see people and people have missed travel, they've missed people and it's just so good to be back doing what we do and getting to share the world. Um, so I have some information here and I wasn't really sure um, what to bring with but just wanted to introduce the company. Okay, guess I gotta do it manually. There we go. So a little bit about Premier. Uh, we're based out of Redondo Beach, California. These are the three owners. We've been in business now for 20, we're actually celebrating 22 years. These are the three owners, uh, Steve, Matt, and Jay. And what's a little unique about us is that we work directly with our groups and organizations across the US. We have a nationwide sales force. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't travel with us, uh, but really what that means is just that we're not going to be, you know, you're not going to get an email box full of emails from us or postcards or magazines or catalogs. Uh, we really are designed to work directly with our group organizers, community, all across the United States. Uh, these are just some of our memberships and associations. Um, and again, you know, Travel obviously uh, took a big hit the past few years, tourism and so forth. We're all kind of rebounding from it now. Uh, matter of fact, if you have anyone looking for a job in the Redondo Beach area, <laughs> we are actively recruiting. Uh, but it's important to know that you're traveling with a reputable company uh, because obviously some of our partners in the industry um, didn't fare so well. So we're very proud to be part of USTOA. Again, that's kind of like what FICA is to banks, I guess. It just means that we've been professionally and financially vetted uh, and have securities built in. And there's only about 54 tour operators in the United States that are part of that. Uh, in our packages, and I am kind of highlighting or just talking, I left some flyers out of our river cruises just because that's a little unique for us. But I'll tell you all our different styles of travel and so forth. Um, one, I think, uh, just talking with folks here, it seems like a pretty well-traveled group, so I'm guessing the majority of you have done a group tour before, but if you haven't, it really is a fantastic way, especially these days with travel, uh, logistics and things getting more and more complicated, whether it's testing, uh, vaccine requirements, uh, you know, visas and all those, it's just nice to have a partner that takes care of all those things for you, and we like to be that partner. Um, so, but also just traveling with groups and, and like-minded individuals, there really is no other experience, whether you're, you know, sitting at an outdoor cafe somewhere in Europe or enjoying, uh, you know, San Antonio and all the fun of the holiday lights and sounds, waking up every day and sharing laughs and moments with people really is what life is all about. And it's just nice to have all those details taken care of for you so you don't need to worry about how to get from A to B and B to C and, and miss all those things. Plus, we have a, all our tours are escorted. We have tour, excellent tour managers. We like to think we have some of the best ones in the industry. And not only do they do a great job of just making sure you see all the things you're going to see, uh, they also just have so much history and knowledge and things that you wouldn't get to experience. Uh, you know, if you were on your own. Um, we handpick all our, our properties uh, based on location, what you need to see. They all have their own unique personality and so forth. So again, uh, really what the premier difference means is just a very all-inclusive experience, but we still always like to give a little free time for you to kind of customize and explore, whether it be exploring your restaurants or unique taste to the area, or maybe having a free optional afternoon or day. So if you're a person that wants to go all, see all, do all, we may offer an optional tour during some downtime. Uh, but if you're someone that likes to kind of have a little time to yourself or wants to go off and explore everything, you can choose that option to kind of customize your tour. So again, also included in, uh, generally when we include everything, it's 
all inclusive. So, for example, the San Antonio tour, and we're doing a Great Trains Grand Canyons that some of you may be signed up on. Uh, it's sold out. Uh, Trevor will take a wait list if, if, if you're interested after this. But basically, our everything is included. The airfare and for our groups that we actually take from Trilogy, we even take you to the airport and we pick you up and bring you back. So it's kind of nice. You don't need to worry about just that's always the most stressful part of the day, right? Like getting to the airport and just getting rid of that bag and getting through security and then you kind of take a breath and go get a bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll take you to the airport and then we'll bring you back. Um, again, a full-time guide. Breakfast is included on all our itineraries every morning so you don't need to worry about that. And then depending on the tour, there's dinners, handfuls of dinners as well. And again, travel, Travel's been in my blood. Um, I've worked for many companies. I've always been in the active adult market. It's been about 20 years now. I've been with Premier for 10 years. Um, and it really is, travel is something that is just a gift. And I, my biggest joy is sharing it with everyone because I think it just brings such a world view and brings us all closer. And again, uh, we talked about hotels, just fantastic accommodations that we use, first class properties. And I'm going to talk about some of our, our travel styles and type of hotels that we, or tours that we book. So first we have kind of what's, what's very popular and kind of some of our signature tours, whether you're going to Cuba, San Antonio, our Sedona Great Trains and Grand Canyons, there are limited stay or one hotel holidays. Now obviously, a lot of tours you can't do that, right? If you're, if you're doing a big Italy tour going north to south, you can't stay at one property. Uh, but certain tours, it's really nice when you can kind of go and just unpack once, right? And then that's your little home for the week, and you don't have to worry about packing up that suitcase or getting it out early or anything like that until you go. So we offer many uh, limited hotel stays. Uh, and then our classic tours are just that. Kind of our, our bread and butter of our guided tours domestically, internationally, um, and then we have many rail journeys and train journeys. So whether it's spending a night on a train or just including trains through the Swiss mountains, our great trains in Grand Canyons, they're going to be going through uh, the Verde Canyon, which the only way you can go through the Verde Canyon is by rail. It's spectacular, beautiful scenery, and then they're actually going to get a little piece of uh, Arizona history when they take the Arizona Railway to the top of the canyon. So again, just incorporating some unique styles of transportation and, and fun and people do enjoy the trains. We also have our exotic tours, uh, whether it be Africa, uh, the Galapagos Islands, uh, Peru, um, so many exotic. We have over 80 worldwide destinations. And then kind of what I'm gonna spend some time because I wasn't sure really what to showcase here because we do go all over, and I left my business card there if anyone wants to see all the destinations we go to, uh, but is our river cruise charter. So we're a little unique in the fact that we work um, directly with the river cruise company, and we actually charter the ship. So we don't offer a zillion different departures, but we actually buy the ship for certain weeks, and then we charter it. So it's really, we partner with MS Amadeus, they're a five-star river cruise line, they do an amazing job. But what it means for you then basically is there's also premier staff on ship, our signage, our book, which kind of just brings it up to the next level. Uh, it also gives us a little more control. Uh, if any of you have done a river cruise, um, how many here have? So almost half, a good portion of you. Uh, I think you can attest that they're a really wonderful way to travel. Uh, it's like a floating hotel, basically. It's almost like that one hotel stay. Uh, but then again, you know, they're, they're bucket list tours, but when you really figure out when you're looking at all that's included, uh, you know, you have your breakfast, lunch, dinner, your wine and beer with dinner, and you figure out when you're off traveling on your own, the food is usually the most expensive thing that you're, you're adding, and so it's nice to have that all included. Um, and again, here's just showcasing, we use, uh, we partner with great motor coach drivers, uh, of course, working mic, uh, AC, restrooms on board when needed. Um, and it just kind of makes us unique. So here, again, we have a nationwide sales team that works with communities like Trilogy um, in helping them uh, offer unique opportunities to their community. And as I promised, we will not email, we will not bug you. Uh, you can go online and look at us, you can reach us out, but we don't go um, and fill up the mailbox. But a lot of great itineraries, over 80 worldwide itineraries, and again, 
uh, our European river cruise charters. When you've done a river cruise, uh, you know, you may have been on one where they're repeating the, the announcements in five different languages, and you're waiting for the English to come, but then as soon as everyone, you know, as soon as the French is done, they start talking in Spanish and so forth. What's nice about the exclusive charters is it is just premier world discovery travelers, so it's English speaking, right? Uh, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and again, I mentioned that uh, hotel stays, limited <coughs> hotel stays, we have uh, over 27 itineraries and destinations with either one hotel or, or limited hotel. So here's just some of our one hotel stays. Again, that Iceland Explorer, that's been very popular. I was talking to Chuck about that. Our Cuba, we stay right in Havana. The Great Trains Grand Canyon, we stay in Sedona. Uh, the French Riviera Explorer, we stay right in Nice. Hub and spoke from there. So domestic, international, we have all kinds of tours that have that limited hotel stay. In range from anywhere from eight, nine days to five days to where you might want to add an extension where we offer extensions uh, you know, to maybe travel off for a few extra days. So it's kind of nice to, you know, travel's great and sometimes for groups, especially we were discussing this this morning, uh, you know, sometimes trips are, are too long, right? Or you're, you're like, okay, I'm ready to be done. We found with our groups, uh, domestically, folks like that six to nine, 10 day, and then internationally, nine and maybe 14 at the most for our, our international. And that's kind of where we stay. Um, so as far as just kind of current requirements and things like that, which uh, we're talking how mandates to travel are, are changing almost seems hourly. Um, but lots is happening and all in the right direction, which I'm very grateful. Uh, but we are requiring vaccinations for all our tours, international and domestic currently. And we just have our commitment to wellness. Uh, and that just means like with all our partners, whether it be hotels, uh, motor coaches, we're all doing our part to just ensure um, safety and cleanliness update. You know, anytime you get off the coach, they're wiping everything down, the hotels, uh, I'm sure all with the user and the travel known, the hotels are doing their part, you know, limited housekeeping right now, which is challenging at times, but uh, um, again, the safety protocol in place. So I'm not gonna spend, I got a lot of pretty pictures here um, and I got limited time because I wasn't quite sure what to do. So I'll kind of just go through. Uh, again, MS Amadeus, great property, the Danube. This has been one of our top selling tours. Uh, we're offering uh, two river cruises. We have two sold out and we have two river cruises offering this year. Uh, but again, uh, the uh, MS Amadeus was part of Ama Waterways. They split due to laws and things, but the same quality. Uh, and again, the star, what I love about river cruising is um, they're intimate, they're small. You're talking about ships of 160, 170 people max. Um, so the food is outstanding. Um, you know, they're not cooking for 2,000 or 2,500 of the big ships and so forth. Uh, and all of these ships are relatively brand new uh, and they're just really uh, modern and spacious with beautiful viewing windows and the service is just top notch. I always make the joke that I show the slide of the fitness room. I've been on a lot of these ships and I've never yet seen everyone use the fitness room. Uh, because if you're traveling, yeah, you go every, uh, you do all that walking in Europe, right? You're, and you're walking more, right? And motor coaches can't take you down the cobblestone street. Uh, so you're definitely getting your miles in. Um, but, uh, but they do have a fitness room. Uh, and then just the fantastic food, you know, always a big welcome reception and then wine, beer, and, and, and so forth included at dinner. And they certainly are generous and the food is fantastic. Uh, beautiful staterooms um, with the French balcony windows. Uh, the lower balcony, that Hayden deck is just a viewing window, but the other decks are either a suite with a walkout balcony or they offer the French balcony and I put way too many slides in there. Uh, but there's a French balcony. So that's basically just a floor to ceiling uh, viewing window, but it has a button that presses down. So it's kind of nice. It really makes it uh, the room wide open and so forth. And then here's the haven of that. But again, just such great touring. Uh, Budapest, again, an amazing city. Uh, and, and just so much wonderful history here and amazing architecture. Uh, so many buildings were destroyed by fire in World War II, 
uh, that were rebuilt and just fascinating to hear all of the history. And on the river cruises, they all do uh, the whisper systems, which if you haven't traveled with one of those, they're, they're fantastic. We do that uh, on our river cruise. You have a little battery pack in your room and then you wear a little, a little piece. Uh, in your ear, which is nice because there is so much history in Europe and you want to hear it when you're walking, but you know, you don't want to have to keep up with the vibe and stuff like that. And then we usually break up our tours uh, to offer, uh, you know, maybe some don't want to go as far or as wide and travel and be gone as long. So we'll have a gentle walking group and then we'll have groups that, you know, want to go and see and do and, and be on the go. So it's kind of nice where really, Sometimes on river cruising, uh, less is more to a certain extent because there is so much to see and do. Uh, and then it feels fantastic when you get back um, to, the, to the ship and can just unwind with some coffee or, um, you know, a glass of wine and so forth. And uh, Bruscott, uh, Vienna, one of my favorite cities. Welcome to Austria. Uh, over 2,500 years of history in Vienna. Uh, again, definitely a bucket list city to see. Amazing architecture. Over two million live in this beautiful city. Uh, it's the second largest German speaking city after Berlin. And again, just a beautiful city with amazing architecture. Uh, the Hofburg Fat Palace, again, such great history here of the Hofburg dynasty um, and their, uh, learn about their residents and, and just their influence over Europe and their. Um, Amazing summer homes and just amazing palaces. So again, it's been so long since we've been able to to be in Europe and experience and do this. Uh, I know the demand has been crazy over the past. I was telling Trevor, uh, it seemed like you know it was a little quiet in 2020. We had a little time to work on some unique destinations, and now the phones are are running off the hook. Uh, Dernstein, the Abbeys. I just love Europe. I love. I, I can't believe I often sit back and I find the main square in town and just have a cappuccino and I think these people get to live and walk and see these things and I know they don't take them for granted but it's just hard to imagine. Then I come home and look at our strip malls and I'm like, oh, <laughs> not the same. Uh, again, some winery visits. Again, a great region for wine. So on the back, I just brought the flyers for our river cruise charters that we're having that still have space available. And there are some um, you know, deals through the end of the month, uh, upgrades and so forth. So, um, But again, lots of wonderful things to see and do. We offer out there extensions on some of them to continue on. This one is the Prague extension. And then we also offer the Christmas market. Now, that has become one of the most popular times to visit Europe. And if you haven't been to a European Christmas market, really nothing else like it. Uh, you know, Christmas has become so commercialized, and it's just these markets are just so beautiful. Um, a kind of old world Christmas, right? You walk around, you see the music playing, and you smell the chestnuts, and you have the, the hot wine, the mulled wine, and so forth. And it's just so romantic, so breathtaking. And each of these markets have such history in um, Europe and Germany and so forth, but they all have their own personality. Some of them are small, some of them are large. Uh, and again, just the amazing architecture, the gingerbread houses. Uh, Nuremberg is the most famous Christmas market. And again, on this Christmas market, we do the Queen. So there's three ships that we're kind of showcasing here. Uh, this one was lodged in 2018. Um, again, just beautiful ships. Of our area. You know, people usually are pretty tired in the evening after dinner. It's like later dinner. And you, uh, you know, they're pretty generous with foreign wine and so forth, so people are ready to go to bed. I always encourage people to go to the bar area, and even if it's just one night or whatever, because they don't have, it's not like a, a big ocean liner ship where, you know, five-star entertainment and dancers and things like that, but it's usually a very talented <coughs> husband, wife, a brother, sister, I don't know if it's small, but they just, they have, the people who are the late-nighters have a lot of fun, because uh, they play games, they entertain, and, and, and it's, it's just a good time. So I always encourage people to stay up a little late and just to enjoy that. But again, all these ships have uh, just wonderful sitting areas uh, to just enjoy, you know, the beautiful sights. 
um, whether you're just um, looking at the castles and doing, you know, the, the cruising through the beautiful rivers. Again, the meals included. Restaurant seating, uh, it's all one seating. So if you're on a big ship, you know, there's like five restaurants and different times. Here we all eat together, uh, so it's really nice. Again, just because, and they can showcase each area where you're going, uh, the specific wines or food to, to maybe where you are. And again, the wonderful Christmas markets in Nuremberg. So that is our Christmas market cruise. And I'm just going fast because I need some uh, the slides. Um, Mozart Square of Salzburg, it's a rule there that everybody learned to sing. Uh, so again, Austria, Vienna, and Salzburg, such musical history, right? Beethoven, and Mozart, uh, and just such beautiful culture. And again, uh, Christmas time is just fantastic. It is cold, some of the dead, but it's cold. Well, but it's beautiful. I'm from Wisconsin originally. Uh, my daughter always says I have Wisconsin blood, so, uh, you know, because she doesn't like the cold. So um, if, if you're from the north, maybe you'll feel better. But it's not too cold. You bundle up, and they have little heaters all over at the markets and so forth. And again, just such wonderful sights. There's that Christmas wine. And again, uh, an opportunity to see Vienna. Hofburg Palace. So all kinds of Christmas markets to see. Uh, another tour, I mentioned Hawaii, and I brought Hawaii just because we do it a little different. It's not a cruise. This is a three island adventure. Uh, and what, so included in, uh, the stuff I have out there all has stuff uh, priced out of Charlotte, but um, what's not, and it includes the inner air, um, but doing Hawaii by land really lets you kind of be a, a, an island kind of thing, right? You get to really just relax, and it's not about a ship or so forth, and so you really get the chance to see the islands and just, uh, you know, experience paradise and the Polynesian culture. So again, Oahu is one of the most populated islands and, and most popular. Uh, but we stay right near the, the beach there at the Sheraton Princess. You'll do some sightseeing, um, Pearl Harbor, so there's a nice mix. There's plenty of free time in here too, uh, but you'll also get to do some touring and, and uh, of course the Pearl Harbor Visitor Center and the Memorial Deck. And just learn of the history of the island. Um, another destination that I have, and I might just, I'm going to escape out of here and find my slides, uh, is just because I know it's coming up, um, and that was going to be my last one here, um, there's the uh, Provence River Cruise Flyer, that was actually, I was supposed to be on that April 15th, 2020, so I, I, I harbor a little resentment <laughs> that I didn't get to go, that was my bucket list trip. <coughs> that I was going to go on, uh, but that is there. We are uh, doing that again, so maybe I'll be on that one. Um, this one is one that um, Trevor is planning to do for the community uh, next year, or yes, next year. So this is our Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Uh, and again, here you'll fly round trip into Albuquerque. And again, uh, the Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque is such a unique area. Uh, you're going to spend two nights at the Marriott and then three nights in Santa Fe. So both really fantastic areas, unique culture and so forth. Uh, but the Balloon Fiesta is one of the top rated photograph events in the United States. Uh, and it really is breathtaking to see. Um, amazing to see. And the reason why it's held in Albuquerque is due to the winds and kind of just the areas there. It's known for its ballooning and so forth. And here you'll have people come um, hundreds and hundreds of balloons represented from all over the world uh, where you'll get to see this amazing event. Uh, you'll get up early, you'll head down in the morning to the dawn patrol, and you'll see them rise up into the sky, all kinds of shapes and colors. So if you're a photographer, you'll want to grab your camera, uh, and then you'll do some touring in Albuquerque, perhaps the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum, uh, of course, get some great 
uh, Tex-Mex food, you know, know your chili peppers and so forth, uh, red sauce, red peppers or green, all hanging there. Uh, but then you'll have the opportunity to go back out to the, balloon, to the balloon festival in the evening and see the glow. And this is where they light them all up at night. And it is bright. <coughs> so a really unique event, very fascinating. Uh, but then your tour will continue as you'll hit the cultural center, the Bradbury Science Museum. Again, uh, just learn the bomb and, and where, how it, they formulated and, and a really well done little museum here. And then one of my favorite cities is Santa Fe. Uh, lots of food, culture. Santa Fe is known as kind of an art area, it's restaurants and kind of, uh, a, it's becoming a big retirement area actually. Uh, but a truly laid back city, uh, when you get to do some great touring, you'll head to Taos, uh, a fantastic destination. So look for that, look for that information that will be coming out. Trevor uh, is working on that, we're working with him, but. We hope to have a great crowd from the Trilogy join us next year for that. So, um, I will say thank you for listening. And any other questions, I'll be around. I'm going to hang out. Uh, and then my card and information's in the back. But thank you for coming out this morning.